the first component you should consider buying for your gaming PC, especially if you haven't even gotten started yet. Even if you haven't decided on AMD or NVIDIA, six core, four core thread CPU, your first component you should consider buying is your monitor. Now, why is that? We're gonna talk about that in this video. So if this is your first time here to the channel, welcome. My name is Terrence. We are back inside the lab. In this video, I'm gonna quickly go over, not quickly probably, but I'm gonna go over a few reasons why your monitor should be the first component you buy for your setup, not just your system. I want you to think a little bit larger outside the box, right? Not just your system, but for your whole entire setup, because this could also, you know, affect your decision to potentially run multiple monitors in the future or to have a setup where you're limited in space. And so you want to keep that in the back of your mind when you're planning the rest of your components, especially your core system or your core components. That is your motherboard, CPU, GPU, and of course your amount, how much RAM you're going to use for that system. And now this is something we've talked about quite extensively over a many of different live streams. In fact, it's been the topic of entire live shows within itself. So if you've heard me, you know, go over this before in the past, this could very much be a refresher for you to share with somebody who's looking to break through over onto this platform that their first component should be your monitor. That should be the first component you should consider buying. Even if you already have the monitor that you want to use for your system, for your gaming PC, that could be a monitor that was gifted to you, or, you know, you could have just had one lying around and, you know, you're, you're going to go with a entry level system, nothing too high end or nothing that's going to necessarily break the bank. But your monitor should be the first component you consider buying. Keyword there is consider buying, not just buying. It should be the first component you consider buying before the others. Why is that? For starters, your monitor, what I like to say here on the channel, your monitor is the window to your PC soul. Everything that your system is able to accomplish, it will display onto your monitor. Not only that, it will greatly affect the type of games you want to play and how you want to experience them. Are you a high refresh rate kind of gamer or do you favor detail and quality in your games? Fam, the type of monitor you want to go with will largely in part have a core impact on, again, the rest of your components. That is, do you need a beefy GPU, a GPU with more VRAM because you want to game at a higher resolution? Or do you need to rely on a fast CPU because you want to game at a refresh rate beyond say 144 Hertz or 165 Hertz or greater? There are monitors out there that are affordable actually that are breaking the 144 Hertz barrier. So if you're into games like Overwatch or Fortnite, again, I don't know why those two games come to mind, but if you're into games that take advantage of high refresh rates versus being able to maximize detail quality, then you need to account for that. Then you need to account for those other type of games I want to play. So this is the type of monitor I'm going to need. And on top of deciding on your monitor before any other components, you also want to do this in tandem with weighing in the type of games it is you want to play. Again, games like Overwatch, Fortnite, or do you want to play games that can really take advantage of improved detail and quality? Games like Dying Light 2, which I played Dying Light 2. If you weren't there for that pop-up live stream, you can check down in the description box below. I always plug the basement, what we call the basement here and inside the lab, but I always plug the basement. A lot of helpful content to either get you started or if you're a regular subscriber here, of course, to get you caught up along your way down there. You might even come across the membership link to, for you to consider becoming a channel member and supporting the channel in that way. It's greatly appreciated, but regular videos come out all the time. So if you're not subscribed yet, but understanding the type of games you want to play and how you want to experience them will help you make a better decision with purchasing the right monitor for your setup. One that you won't necessarily have to upgrade anytime soon or in the near future because the games will change, the hardware will change, but the resolution and refresh rate you want to game at will relatively remain the same. If you want to game at 4K, 60 FPS, or you, know, you want your system to have an output of 60 FPS, or you want a, a 60 Hertz 4K monitor, then you know you're going to need a decent quality GPU with today's game standard, some of the most popular 
games that, that have that have came out within the last year, for example, you may need a graphics card that's exceeding the eight gigabyte VRAM allotment, right? You might need a graphics card that's in the 10 gigabyte, uh, you know, realm simply because even with turning the graphics down, you're still, you still, the GPU will still need to account for those higher resolution textures. So it will be taxing on your VRAM. And then also at 4K, your CPU is a factor, not a significant factor, but your CPU still will play a role that's processing any AI or any simulation based graphic settings. So when you're considering say gaming at 4K, then your first or the component that you want to put the most attention to or invest the most in would be your GPU, would be your graphics card, which at the time of shooting this video here in 2022, Graphics cards are still slightly expensive. If you're stateside, or if you can get to a micro center where you even got to connect here in the states, you know, if you're stateside, micro center does have a lot of different entry level GPUs available. They even have a few 6900 XTs. I've been checking, you know, not just the one that's closest to me, but I've been checking other micro centers as well. But there are modern graphics cards that are capable of running that resolution, running 4K that you could buy right now in a retail store and not necessarily have to deal with the scalper tax. But then say you don't want a game at 4K. Maybe you want a blend of both high refresh rate and higher level of detail. Say that's exceeding 1080p. Two of the most popular resolutions, or I guess that's becoming more and more popular, is 2560 by 1440p. And my personal favorite res uh, uh, resolution and aspect ratio that is 21 by 9, 3440 by 1440p. It is in my honest opinion that that aspect ratio resolution and then you can pick up a decent ultra wide, 21 by 9 ultra wide monitor for around five to 600 bucks at the time of shooting this video. So they are super affordable and accessible. And the same thing with a decent 2560 by 1440p monitor, which could be had for like more than likely half of that, depending on the refresh rate you're targeting. The most standard from what I can see on the new market is about 144 hertz, 2560 by 1440p, 144 hertz. And depending on the manufacturer, other features like response time, number of HDMI outputs, HDMI 2.1 or display port, and built speakers, depending on other features, then you can pick up a decent 2560 by 1440p monitor for yeah about half that price, somewhere between 200 and 200 and but between 200 to 300 dollars is a, a a good starting point if you want to find yourself in the middle or a resolution and refresh and a resolution and a decent refresh rate that's going to complement a core of the games that are available and what most of us PC gamers like to enjoy. And then we have the ever popular or still popular and entry level resolution. And that is 1920 by 1080p. It is still heavily targeted for a lot of, you know, PC gamers who are looking to break onto the platform for the first time. And they necessarily don't want to break the bank. You can pick up a decent 1080p monitor, even if it's the standard 60 hertz for well under $100. And even if you want a higher refresh rate at 1080p, you could pick up a 144 hertz monitor in most cases or most instances depending on where you are located here on the globe you could pick up a 144 hertz monitor for under 200 usd or slightly over 200 usd if you have 165 and 265 hertz options should you really want to break into say a community um, a, a community, uh, not community, but a competitive like ecosystem to where you want the, you want to gain as many advantages over your opposition as possible. One way that you can do that, or one way you can achieve that is putting a considerable, a considerable amount of thought into the type of monitor you want to buy, or you want to run your setup on your, your, you know, your base system. If that's 1080p, you likely have, or if that's a 1920 by 1080p monitor at standard 60 hertz, you have a lot of flexibility within your budget in terms of what could be available and affordable. Those two, those two words are what's key there, available and affordable. You have a lot of wiggle room with your budget to build a system that could complement that resolution and that refresh rate. And now, because keep in mind that while me as a PC gamer, maybe you as a PC gamer, hopefully you as a PC gamer, 
So that's because us as PC gamers, we all may rely on the same fundamental components to build our system. The, the end user experience will very much differ and vary between you, you, I, me, them, doesn't matter. How you want to run your games may not be the same way I want to run my games and vice versa. I favor detail and quality in my games versus a high FPS output and low response time. Maybe you're the type of gamer that doesn't like playing those kind of games like The Witcher 3, right? So while the components may be the same, the expectations are very much different. This is why, again, you want to put the thought into your monitor before you, you buy any other component. Now, that's not, you know, denoting the significance and the importance of those other components, right? Like your motherboard, your CPU, and your GPU. But depending on the resolution and the refresh rate you want to experience your games will also depend on how much money you should and will likely need to allocate to those components that way you get the most out of your monitor rather that also be avoiding screen tearing or maybe you want to be able to adjust your monitor's articulation you want it to tilt maybe you want it to lean back maybe you want it to swing and be in a and be in portrait mode right depending on how you the end user want to experience your media how you want to play your games will very much depend on how much you need to spend within your pc or Within your entire setup and how much you should spend on the type of monitor if you're casual then 1080p 60 hertz monitor likely right up your alleyway if you're a little bit on the high end or extreme maybe you have a 1080p 200 and you know 265 hertz or 144 hertz plus monitor because you you, you want to take advantage of higher refresh rates and low response times or maybe you, you're into slow burn games and you just kind of want to take sit back and take it all in. And so you want to game at 4K. Here, me recently in between moving studios, I've enjoyed gaming at 4K simply because I don't have enough space for my ultra wide monitor. But I've enjoyed gaming at 4K. I just hope I can switch back to 3440 by 1440p without any problems with, with the extra space between the left and right uh, side of the monitor. I really don't see why there, where there would be an issue the detail in 4k is great but sometimes i just you know miss the uh the fluidity of playing at 100 hertz that's the that's the refresh rate on my ultra wide monitor i don't need any 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 more or any less if you will um i also create most of my content on my ultra wide monitor um when i had the old studio uh, but here the 4k monitor does just fine with like color accuracy and color correction and things like that working on content but when it comes to my games yeah i'm more of a 3440 by 1440p resolution and, and that monitor in particular comes in at 100 hertz there are higher refresh rate 14 ultra wide 1440p monitors if that's something you're interested in but for me personally I'm okay with 1440 by 1440p. You let me know down in the comment section what resolution and refresh rate your primary monitor is for your setup, or if you are interested in buying a monitor, also let me know down in the comment section. And then if you're considering running your games at a higher resolution than 1080p, say 1440p, like the aforementioned resolution that I kept talking about, like 1440p, or even 4K, 3840 by 2160p. If you're in the ballpark of wanting to experience your media and experience your games at either one of those two resolutions, then no, you will need most likely a beefy GPU, which you will find yourself spending on, up to or onward of at least $600 or more, at least in the current landscape and the current climate of uh, what graphics cards are selling for. Again, there are some in Micro Center, so if you can get the Micro Center, go, go now, go, go. Like, like this video first and, and then go, go ahead, I'll be here. All in all, you might be saying, you know what, Lab, that sounds good and all, but I've already bought my GPU. I've already bought my motherboard and my CPU because I got it on a bundle deal, or I snagged the GPU when I was in a micro center and had my hands physically on one. That's okay too, fam, if you already bought, you know, other components. If you already purchased your motherboard or your GPU, you know, your case notwithstanding, that's only, that's going to have a minor impact on performance, more so on your system's ability to move hot air out and to pull cold air in but for the components that have the most effect or the the uh the, the highest 
impact on your FPS output. Even if you've already bought one or two or more of those components already, that's perfectly fine, fam. I don't want you to make it feel like, oh, I've made a mistake. Lab said, buy your monitor first. This needs to be the first component you buy. If you've already bought those components, that's okay too, fam. I would then start with looking at the type of games you want to play and then proceed to make your decision on your monitor based off of your findings, right? If that's games that you know aren't super graphically demanding or you bought a lower end graphics card, say that's under six gigabytes of VRAM or if it has eight gigabytes of VRAM surpassing 2560 by 1440p, it's really going to be pushing the limits on what can be considered playable. And even then you may have to find yourself lowering some of the graphics settings, which at that case, you're just getting more pixels, but you're also sacrificing detail and FPS. So if you've already purchased, say, your CPU and your motherboard, right, maybe you have a 11th generation i5 or an, a 12th generation i5 or maybe an older 8th or 9th generation CPU, regardless of the generation and the chipset, if you've already bought it, start again looking at the type of games you want to play. Decide on, will I need a faster GPU or a GPU that has a certain amount of VRAM? Some games, most games do have vram limitations so you want to keep that in mind when you're looking to buy you know your gpu if you already bought your cpu and motherboard and if you already bought your gpu also consider that at certain resolutions you want to avoid any potential bottlenecks so if you have a fast gpu you don't want to invest in a slow cpu and then game at 1080p you will be leaving performance on the table in a form of a potential or potential bottlenecks in the, in the games you want to play but again your experience starts and it ends with your monitor. It starts with your monitor because that's the first component you should consider buying before any of the others. It ends with your monitor because once your system is already built for you, or if you've done it yourself, or you bought even a pre-built PC, right? Let's not leave out our pre-built buying, pre buying PC stands. Regardless of how you acquired your system, it's going to end with your monitor. It's going to start with your monitor and it's going to end with your monitor man it's going to start by picking out you know basing your monitor off of your needs and expectations how you want to play your games how you want to run your games how you want to experience your games and it's going to end when you go to sit down and game when you go to plug in the hdmi cord for the first time or the display port for the first time so that's why it starts with your monitor and it ends with your monitor Without the way, that's all I got for this one, fam. I brought to you again another inside the car, inside the lab video. I've been uh, mobile here a lot, so I've been just trying to find times in between here to shoot some updated content in between and get back to our regular weekly, uh, weekly uploads, whatever the format that may be. I'm more of a person that's into content value versus production value. So long as I look good, sound good, that's okay. But most importantly, the message needs to be what is the most important when it comes to producing videos. But without the way, again, I welcome you to head down to the description box below for additional content that again, could help you get started or to help that can help you get caught up with more inside the lab content. I do hope to catch you on the next one or on our weekly live stream that, that are every Saturday, loosely. <laughs> and our upcoming channel membership, uh, Live XE, the Live Extended Edition for channel members. Either way, I do hope to catch you all in the next one. So until then, be easy.